Hmm. Good morning, everyone. Um, so today we are trying an emotional practice together. Um, this is one I picked up uh, on a retreat and also sort of was fiddling with on my own. Uh, it was about January this year. I was coming up with these ideas and then I went on some other retreat and we had these exercises and I was like, these are exactly the ones I was thinking of. Um, so what it is, is an exploration of mainly fear, anger, and sadness. So going into those places and sitting with them a bit as, as a group and getting real comfortable in like noticing the sensations in the body that arise with them. And then, uh, and then talking about it a little bit. Um, so emotions, we're going to be in the like often in the sensations in the chest because we are talking about emotions and often they happen in the chest uh but also the rest of the body um so again less thought more emotions but uh with that in mind uh where would you like to start fear anger or sadness i feel like sadness is always easiest for me to tap into of those three cool it's a good place to start um mm -hmm. all right so feel free to uh close your eyes for a moment and notice any sensation in your body that it has a connection to sadness. Uh, notice what is the quality of sadness and uh, how do you know that you have sadness? I have like a tightness in my throat. Mm. Yeah. Try and bring those sensations to the present moment. And uh, what I'll do is I'll get us all to open our eyes and talk about what we can find in the realm of noticing sadness. So sort of tightness or pulsation between lower throat and upper chest. Mm. <clears throat> so what we might notice is body sensations. Uh, what we might notice is other emotions that are related to sadness. Uh, what we might notice is thoughts that are encouraging us or inviting us to go to other places. But yeah, what is, if you bring sadness to this present moment, what do you find? Definitely some fear connected to it. Well, there was like a second ago before I said that. And somehow, maybe it, it seems. Certainly a sense of longing, desire for something. Um, physically, I always feel like vacancy almost behind the front wall of your chest. I have like a quivering in the center of my chest. Uh, it, it, uh, I, I wonder if it is the the, the two ways of looking at this exercise, one is I look through the lens of sadness and I find where the sadness is in my body that was already there that I was ignoring. And the other is that I call up sadness that is latent in my experience and that may need processing. Um, so I do wonder if that that is always there or if it is ex especially present in this moment for some reason. Mm -hmm. But yeah, that that quiver in the, the chest thing. I feel like my body goes a little soft as well. It like has the, like a delicate shape to it. Yeah, I, you lose support a little bit. Like you stop supporting yourself. You don't inflate your chest. You don't uh, activate mm. your spine or your, or your stomach. 
When you mentioned mm -hmm. sadness, I felt some sort of relief because I thought I'm holding to some sadness, but now mm -hmm. it's it just passing through it and accepting that it's maybe in the past, although it will come more, but it's like not focusing on the past because more sadness. Usually it feels like sadness is the carry carried from the past for whatever reason, like it's, it's some property of, of load of years and maybe something that experienced before even recently. And now it feels that sadness is sort of accepted. Uh, but the feel, the, the sensation is definitely in this upper chest, uh, lower throat, like this, this area. Mm. When he mentioned the load of the past, right? I have like attention to my shoulders that are quite tight. And it seems like I'm holding on to some sadness there. And there's tenderness. And when I go into the, like the tender softness, does that feel some sort of joy? at the same time, like it doesn't take away from the sadness. Mm. Uh, one way of thinking about this, if, if we're pulling up the wells of the past, uh, I often build this dam that holds back all of the, the things that were sad. And this is like inviting us to look through the sadness that's us to empty out the well a little bit. Um, obviously, if you find there's like a really big well, maybe it'll take a bit longer to empty out, um, to sit with, to like pour out those things that have filled it up. But potentially you and many people in the population have this well that they are just holding back the dam of, of sadness and, and uh, hoping it doesn't accidentally break today. But if we can clear it up, we don't have to be holding so hard holding back this thing. Um, yeah. yeah. I, I think for me, my experience of sadness is less a dam holding it back and more a raft floating on top of it, um, where it's mm. something that, that can sit in my life, and, but it, I don't have to be submerged in it. Um, and in some ways, I can ride the waves of the sadness that I feel, and that can propel me into other parts of my life. But mm. perhaps I'm leaving something underneath all that. Mm. No, it's good. It's, um, I don't know. You, yours may be shaped like that, mine may be shaped like this, or all of these could be shaped like both, and you're looking at it in a way that you can find that way, and I'm looking at I'm not sure. I definitely yes. find both easy to relate to. Mm. Uh, what we might do is shake that one off and switch. Um, shall we go to fear or anger? Feel free to stretch, shake. Remember, buddy. Uh, Sagnus has this like uh, stagnancy in it a bit, but. Uh, we don't have to stay there. I've been thinking about fear all day, I guess. So not necessarily dwelling in it. All right. Well, let's go there. Uh, so, so if we close our eyes for a moment, uh, Pay attention to those sensations that, that are in the present moment, uh, fearful. And uh, there will be other sensations. There's the body, there's the breath, there's the thoughts, there's everything else going on. But some of those are explicitly more fearful than others. And what we can do is amplify, bring that fear really present to the present moment. Um, for me, that, that quiver in the body from sadness really does become like the shake. I notice my, my brain, my mind space sort of clears out and gets very sharp and vigilant into that, that fearful space. But you notice any other sensation of fear, bring it forward and 
when you're ready, we can open our eyes and name them. I want to name that, that quiver in my voice that, that comes out. Like the first time I started to saying anything about fear, my voice starts going quivery. And uh, it's remarkable because I never, it surprised me every time. I don't expect it and I don't intend it. And there it is. Yeah, I get the same thing. <laughs> and yeah. Oddly enough, there's a sweet spot of like six to 15 people <laughs> where speaking in front of them gives me that fear and that, that uh, quiver in my voice. But if it's less than six people or if it's more than 15 people, it totally goes away. It's, I, I wonder what it is about that particular size of a group of people that makes it s scary. But mostly I feel fear in my fingers and in my feet. Like it's weird, it's more the extremities compared to sadness, which is very all up in here. It feels like in upper heart area, and symmetrically in the same place on the right, like this, this regions, they tighten. And for some reason, the shoulder, but I have suspicion that that's like individual traumas with shoulders that bounce back and re re remind of pain and conceptual limitations that, that fear plus pain bring. So you conceptually want to accept pain and resilience associated with that. It still somehow uncontrollably gets in there. You made me think that probably part of why it's in my hands and feet is, is defense, is wanting to defend or to act or flee or, mm. and so that is my training that I received, the, those traumas, is, is that you can block your face or whatever. It reminds me of holding two identities. We talked with Ray yesterday about this, and it just re reminded me back that this, this is one of the fear that it feels, regardless of focus on that, holding two identities and somehow grasping whatever you perceive is yours or old or should is seem futile, but it seems futile, but it's recurring and fear of stepping on the same spot of holding two identities is, is present. Because identity is constantly created and even like I feel that for the longest time I wanted to reject identities and with older identities sometimes it feels it's easier but then they just constantly create it and there is this grasp. <laughs> like while I'm saying that I feel this tightness in, in the in in the upper heart. Hmm. One of the effects that I feel fear has is it shoots me up straight into my head. Like, and, and I'm thinking more and I'm planning and I'm calculating and I'm like watching more. And I'm and I'm faster as well in the head. I I feel that space right behind your eyebrows, like something there, but it has a very different effect for me where it's not so much uh, a, a head space thing, but a body reaction. Like fear definitely takes me out of my abstract mind and puts me more into my physical mind. Mm -hmm. This region and the the thing that Elio described, it reminded me a few episodes from childhood when you accept death, like 
when you're on the on the brink of something like some I don't know the road collision or something like that where you think you still need to fight for life and then there is this moment where you accept that you're not fighting and you're about to die but you're not dying and this switch from fear to complete acceptance it's a very captivating moment between this analytical what Elliot described as like thinking faster how I still can save myself what is in the fear that will save my identity or whatever I am and then accepting all of that and just like going in, in this space. Mm. It makes me realize that perhaps the reason fear takes me out of my abstract mind is as the abstract mind feels very divorced from fear and that like that is the the part of the mind that plans and solves and does all these things and so the moment i am in fear is the moment that that abstract mind has failed me and and so i i latch on to the other parts of the mind that might still escape mm. definitely feels like like you said training for me my training is Think faster. Think a, think a way out of this one real quick. <laughs> yeah. Or I don't know if I, I was thinking more like habit than training. Yeah. I mean, it's all the same. How do you get habits? Yeah. <laughs> yes. True training. But it, yeah, I was thinking less deliberate, more uh, it happened that this is my habit rather than I was mm -hmm. trained in, in, in getting to here. Yeah. Um, Ultimately, I want that uh, quickness to be present with me all the time so that I'm a greatly quickened person. But um, I want to not be, I also don't want to be trapped in those habits. Yes. Uh, I want them available and, but not trapping. And that is the fine line for fear as well, is, is that it's a, a very short jump to excitement. Um, and, and in that way, you and can use fear. Yeah, uh, and and there is that line of, do I actually feel in control of the situation, which which might be connected to exhilaration versus fear. How how out of control do I feel? If I'm just a little mm. bit out of control, maybe I'm still exhil exhilarated. Hmm. I think I should shake off you. Feel free to get it out of your system. <sighs> Ultimately, there's something about these emotions that often get tagged as unwanted or I don't like this, like fear bad, sort of. You know. um, and it's in practice, we want to get to the other side of it. So it's like, these things are actually good and useful. I mean, fear gets me out of danger. Therefore, fear isn't a bad thing. Fear may be the like the bearer of bad news because I'm in danger, but fear uh, and uh, anger, sadness, all of them should be treated as uh, yeah, maybe hard yeah. at first, but treated as like wonderful messengers. The other the other side of that is they bring with them these cool capacities like thinking faster and like sadness has that uh, softening of, of of tension. And so those are two really, and anger also has this, we'll get to that in a moment, but these capacities that are not otherwise there. Uh, so if you'd like to close your eyes and check into anger. So noticing the present moment, uh, first thing that I notice is my voice goes deeper. It's like, ah, uh, let's, let's get uh, connected into that thing that is, uh, like a deep well of power. Um, I feel again, it all in my jaw. Uh, uh, yes. There's something interesting about jaw lines and, and one group is on their jaw, I think. Uh, and that's because there is an anger that goes to, and that's where the power comes out, often through our lead, leading speech. But 
well, just mechanically, you're also less likely to be knocked out if if your jaw is clenched and and you have a contiguous bone and Ooh. all of that. Interesting. Hmm. I hadn't thought of that one. That's that's very cool. Um, but like checking I, in with hmm? yep. Heartbeat is much more pertinent now. Like I. Like my heartbeat just is more front and center than it was with the other two emotions. Does it did it speed up or did it just get louder? Just louder. I wonder if there's like a blood pressure thing. It's just pumping slow still but harder. Every pump is like a hmm. Things feel like more solid, uh, both myself and the rest of the world. If I'm going to punch a wall, I feel like my fist is going to be solider, but also the wall is going to be harder. So I better push, better hit it double as hard so it actually breaks. It feels like the whole line from shoulders to palms or fists are tightened, and there is like one line that forms the arm, and that's the most focused. Like both arms very uh, symmetrically as opposed to other feelings where the anger no, not the anger the sadness and the first association that came with that was sort of reactivity because I was trying to find where anger is open up in my life like for for a while and it seems it's always very biologically rooted it's it feels that it's somehow rarely manifested and very, very deeply biologically rooted. When you when you have some very strong pain, you have reaction to that, and that's that can be manifested as some sort of inner anger. And this line of like shoulder to to palm is right away activated, and ready to go. Uh, I often think of anger as a uh, work up the uh, power to uh, attack or defend uh, and so in those arms it's the like I'm ready I, I'm I have readied myself for whatever I need to carry out uh, it definitely feels like it starts a bit lower for me like a mm. bit below my rib cage and rises up and then like feels down the arms ready to respond For me, it feels like it comes up from the earth almost. That's how low it is. It's, and it, it like pulls you into it as well. Uh, it, it like locks you to the earth. Mm. I wonder if there is a, if, if, I wonder if I'm not clean enough and if I get cleaner, it will come right from the earth rather than from like halfway up my body. It'll come right from deep. Possible. I, I, all the I, way uh, to the fingertips. Possible. I, I, I think for me, <laughs> probably comes from wrestling my brothers and everything. And, and so part of keeping your power is keeping your attachment to the ground. Um, mm -hmm. And so, like, you can draw strength from that. And I think however anger channels its way into me, it might be latching onto that as well. Hmm. Get the impression that it, hmm, it feels like I'm a dog with a leash on me and I'm just like wanting to surge forward. Like there is some sort of fence or barrier or something like that and I just want to push through it. Yeah, that's another thing I notice is the heat often. The heat builds up. Um, and with that, uh, it's a bit of tension and heaviness too. Yeah. Um, no, I think my heaviness 
tends to be around my pelvis at the moment. Like it's like my hips and my pelvis. Hmm. I wonder if it's associated with how you want to imagine yourself dealing with whatever anger is meant to deal with, like what you, mm-hmm. what you used to throw at, at the object of, of anger. And like it feels for me right away, this sort of metaphorical arm that like I'm, I'm being completely subsided and there is just uh, two arms hanging in the air without mm-hmm. any other parts of the body and they just like stretch it from the shoulder to the tips of the finger and mm. like, that's that's all, all all there is to the to my body that's mm-hmm. an interesting thing about anger as well compared to the sadness and fears that for me at least sadness and fear is very internally directed but anger is externally directed mm-hmm. I, it's something that i want to pull out of myself to crush something else um as opposed to those other emotions. Yeah. It's really now I wonder if it's going to my hips and heavy there because like in grappling, when I grapple, like it's all about the hips versus punching. Mm-hmm. And I wonder like the, like I'm thinking about elbows that uh-huh. the most, damaging part of my body. Mm-hmm. Your knees. Knees, weirdly, it's for some reason, bottom part of the body always plays in some sort of grounded and relaxed and maybe fused into, into earth and, and ground. And it's, it's more peaceful force, I imagine. Like it's the force of constant move, like floaty, rivery, and earthy. The, the magic of earth the earth magic the, the arms they they are like in some in some sense very reactive because there is no no thinking to that they just move and, and act on the world all right i think we should shake up and go Feel free to remove it, let it out of it. Um. <laughs> it really fascinates me how it really is in the body, like the, the, the <laughs> tightness or the heaviness or the quivers, they're like right here. And, and when they do move, they do uh, move themselves. Um. <sighs> yeah, I was noticing also the difference between releasing everything whereas like anger really felt like just tensing everything was the right move whereas you know fear felt more about loosening up and ready to letting it out mm. yeah I, I mean just just the way that you because the anger it felt right to just tense and and like exert the energy whereas like fear it felt more about uh, rolling everything so that the the I don't know the uh, closeness the the pulling in of fear just counteracts it a little bit to roll everything out. Um, releasing those emotions feels different to me. Mm. The the remedy feels like it should be different. All right, so the next one uh, I want to check in with is joy, because we've done a bunch of the usually difficult emotions, but we might as well do a good one, a fun one. Um, So again, noticing that joy and lightness in your current experience and noticing where it is. I think the first most dramatic thing about this one is where the other ones, I think, I like, in addition to you guiding it, I would have to like close my eyes for a moment. Whereas with joy, it seems like I want to keep my eyes open. 
Mm. Like, like the cue for joy was somehow outside and visual. Like I'm looking at the paintings here and Yeah, that's, yeah, I wonder why it was easier that way. Mm. I mean, I, I certainly relate. I think joy is an easier emotion to summon for me. Um, I'm not sure what about it makes it more accessible in that way. Um, I think probably because in the moment here, joy is a more accessible emotion. I am with my friends, mm -hmm. at least in electromagnetic spirit. <laughs> um, and so I'm curious why that is more accessible and what about my life has made that more accessible? Because certainly I, I see a lot of other people where that is definitely not the case, where certain sadness is the more accessible emotion or anger is the most accessible. Hmm. I feel like the general likeness, everything is like floating a little. Um, my visual field, like, uh, I'm going to use the word luminous. The, the things that are colored are brighter somehow. Um, and you can see it in my, my, my movement of my body and then also my voice. It's a bit higher and it's a bit jumpier. Uh, because that, that's, that's like, like a light amount of joyousness. It's popping around. It feels like it's on the level of skin, like covering all the body and a little bit electrifying it like a outer shell and mostly focused also on arms but partially go into the like hips and legs and yeah covering covering the outer shell there is no deep inner location it's just the the surface of, of the whole of the whole body mm -hmm. i feel like a, a leaf like a really bright leaf on a river or something like that on the pond kind of just floating floating around with the eddies yeah in the same way anger was a an emotion of earth joy is very much an emotion of air where you know i i i want to be more in the air and and out in the air off of the earth so this also reminds me of um, when noticing the difference between gravity and, and lightness, uh, where, where if I check in with the lower half of my body, the half that's facing gravity, I can feel this heaviness down there. And then if I check in with the like upper half of my body, the half, half that's facing upwards, so like the top of my shoulders, parts of my hands, there's like a lightness there that is different to the heaviness that is underneath. And, and joy sort of has me check in with the lightness, the bits that are on top a bit more than the bits that are on bottom. Mm. But then of course I can notice that both are there with the light and the heavy are present. Mm -hmm. It somehow hints to the anticipatory nature of joy, although I realize that in most cases, like joy could be and is like the absolute presence, but the anticipatory flavor of joy that, that is like electricity, the hum over body is more noticeable and more visceral uh, and it's very like physical sensory. It's sort of like another another type of sensation, extension of of maybe tangibility and then eyesight and hearing that is just humming with electricity. 
very active force, the magic of electricity, the lasers and, and plasma. Is this the kind of funny thing where uh, the word energy is very much a scientific word mm -hmm. that gets used in the spiritual realms and often scientists are very annoyed that the, this, uh, this science word gets used in the, in the spirit realm. Uh, but I'm pretty sure that energy started in the spirit realm and it got taken to name something scientific and, and then it like, it was like, no, that's a science thing and this is not a, a spiriting thing. Um, but that's just I'm a trying, bit of I'm trying to rel relinquish my, my uh, biases and snobbishness as a scientist. <laughs> well, but that's the thing. We, we live in this land of this existence of blur between the two anyway. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, um, so that's joy, as we, we can feel it. Um, but what we can also do is invite the other three in here as well. So, a bit of joy, that fear can be present as well. And I feel like my heartbeat increasing a little when I say that. And then the, the anger as well, and I can feel my arms filling out a bit with that. And then the sadness and the whole thing just softened a little bit. But I can be present to all of those things, which, you know, if I'm a busy human, probably I am. I'm just too busy to check in with them all. But hopefully they're always present. And hopefully they're not building up like a dam or an ocean that, <laughs> that I'm floating on. But actually I'm present to them as they come and go. I gotta admit, when we did that, I just started feeling a little bit nauseous. <laughs> mm. um, yeah, it's interesting. Go ahead. I was gonna say, uh, I think headaches are a combination, for me it feels like, between anger and sadness, that I just, I don't want to deal with either, and so they like, they dam up and then they become a headache. Um, and uh, if I sit with them, I, I go either towards anger or towards sadness, and then they can sort of untease themselves a bit. But I wonder if nausea is one of those combination experiences between maybe fear and sadness or something, or fear and anger. Or... Yeah, I, I mean, certainly it, it's an interesting experience to feel how the emotions interact and that like my sadness makes me angry or or that my anger makes me a little sad and or afraid or or happy in those ways and and how do they flow and give and take between each other um the other thing i noticed when i first started practicing with these things is that the fear anger and sadness are a lot like an elastic band and i have like and like stretch out and I lived every day in this like stretched out mode and then I started like doing a practice like this and it like loosens the as I sit in anger it like softens the elastic band and then I'm like contracted and if a new thing comes up I can stretch out again but otherwise I was like fully extended like at my edge but with that like free space I can then respond better in to everyday situations rather than like being here and trying to respond further and really not having, I, I had so much more freedom uh, if I was addressing that fear, anger and sadness as throughout the day, as it came up, um, but generally emptying the well or reducing what's there. The depths there, mm, not main, but all, is it an exhaustive list of uh for the lack of a better word, negative emotions? Um, those three sort of come up as a core. Um, they, they're definitely like very different directions, uh, fear, anger, and sadness. Um, there is another list, um, a guy called Doug Tataran uh, has something called Bioemotive Framework, and he's got nine core negative. Uh, he, he separates emotions and feelings these are nine core negative feelings and the difference he proposes is that the feelings are relational so these emotions you can just feel sad without a stimuli 
uh, where it's feelings. So one of them is uh, feeling alone is a relational experience. Feeling helpless is another relational experience. Um, and then he does similar that we go, you go with him, go in, uh, release if things are locked up and then clear them out so that you can have relation without the presence of the, the built up well of the negative emotions, but uh, uh, negative feelings. Uh, but yeah, these three, they seem to somehow be the root. Many other ones come back to them. Um, there's like frustration is on the vein of anger and like being upset is on the vein of sadness and anxiety is on the vein of fear. But it seems like these three are the core of the emotions. Um, Mm. But yeah, that's yeah. sort of the entire of the exercise to step into them, play with them, notice them in the body, then give yourself the opportunity next time they come up to notice them again, now that you've recognized them and, uh, and like put them into your mind, what they feel like, you'll know when they come back. Um, and then, you know, relationally share them and explore how other people have slightly different versions of them. Um, I also like the way that I notice, for example, T talked about uh, joys on the skin. I'm like, ah, it's on my skin too. <laughs> like, obviously, I just haven't <laughs> quite clicked, but it is in fact on my skin. So that mm -hmm. was sort of surprising for me. Um, but yeah, if you want to have any last reflections before we hit stuff on the recording? or I've missed uh, the rest of your uh, ah. bit about the elastic band but I was I was going to add that uh, certainly in my life I have a tendency when I feel the elastic band to relax it and mm. and that is my first response is no oh, there's a lot of tension here just relax it. and and mm. perhaps it is it's worth my time to investigate what this feels like more I, I would say both um, the, the benefit I, I'd say a lot of people don't realize they can just relax and you've got a skill there where you have learned that already um and i would be encouraging people that they can let it go more often but also sitting in places of tension and conflict and getting the hang of it means that you can you can outlast other people in places of tension awkwardness uh, discomfort you can make a business deal where they they have to give up you can sit at that table and you can be like no this is what i want in a way that they'll be like this is way too uncomfortable for me. I'm out. <laughs> uh, so, so you could benefit <laughs> yeah, if you can was... sit. Uh, I have a book at the moment called Sitting in the Fire. So if you can sit in discomfort, you can bargain in that place. And I could sit here all day, you know? Yeah. <laughs> and the other person may not. It feels a state where you are not pulling the string but completely relaxed can have some sort, sort of alternation, like matter and antimatter. Uh, and that's why I was asking about whether you find some other negative emotions. Uh, I think more, like the most current theory of emotion as a reinforcement of analytical imperatives that are beneficial for fitness, for survival. And if you strip down you to analytical engine without emotions, I perceive it as this absence of strings, absence of pools, absence of this rubber emotional thing is and you can feel both completely contemplative and content in this absolute zen moment for a lack of a better term or you can feel absolute pointless pointlessness of anything and it could it could be this or it could be different feelings and i'm on a few times in my life tapped in both of them and it feels very different innerly but it seems they both don't have a pool of a rubber bands like, I think that's why, like, I'm coming to this Fermi paradox. That's why we don't see civilizations, because <laughs> some of them stopped pulling the rubber bands, and this stop pulling the rubber bands is this flip of, of this kind of matter and matter. And on the other hand, you just sit and observe beautiful unveiling of the universe without any pools, without any rubbers, because it just is, and you are in this perfectly heavenly moment. And those, those flips of seemingly the same, 
they probably not feel it's, it's the state of this just pure stripped down analytical engine that just computes. But if you don't have reinforcement where to compute with anger or Jura or whatever, it just becomes this uh, empty, most beautiful and, and weird. I definitely space. noticed um, when I started <clears throat> playing in these emotional spaces is that my motivation was often linked to as I like relax that rubber band, like suddenly I had like extra give in terms of <clears throat> motivating myself. Like it was the same rubber band as this weld up anger that was like motivation to go do an art project or something. Mm -hmm. and so there's some, some link there that is interesting and worth exploring that when you free up one, you also free up motivation. Where do you hang your rubber band? <laughs> I mean, this whole conversation has reminded me I should spend more time in emotions generally than I currently do. Uh, and I assume the motivation uh, it, will come back to. I, th I think it's easy to forget to sit in your emotions when you're normal interaction with other people is through this medium. <laughs> and and perhaps uh, when we have more interaction with with our peers in our physical space, that that desire and ability to live in emotion will return just as easily. Mm. We are in emotional resonators, you know. It's it's uh, interesting experiment to see all these resonators in their little uh, Faraday cages. <laughs> mm. Well, thank you all for coming. Thank you. Um, I hope you enjoyed. I hope you have stretched out and relaxed your elastic bands. Yeah, I'm going to go dance, baby. Thank you. <laughs> mm.